Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, Thirst. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. A compassionate priest called Uncle Priest visits a chronically ill patient as a part of his ministry work. The patient asks Uncle Priest to play the flute for him. To make the patient happy, Uncle Priest goes outside to get the flute, but upon returning, the patient falls into a coma. Meanwhile, the nurse who takes care of the ill patient turns out to be suicidal, so she confesses it to Uncle Priest. He then advises the nurse to cope with her suicidal tendencies, since the act of suicide is a mortal sin worse than murder. To help save lives, Uncle Priest selflessly decides to participate in the vaccine trial that aims to cure the Emmanuel virus. He then informs the blind superior priest about his decision. In response, the superior priest warns him about the danger of the experiment, but he still insists since he really wants to help save other people. The following day, he comes to the doctor who leads the vaccine trial to inform the doctor about his decision to participate. The doctor then warns him about the danger, since the trial would infect the participants with the virus to test the effectiveness of the vaccine. At this moment, Uncle Priest already made up his mind, and confidently declares that he is participating in the trial out of his faith. The nurse then ushers him to the trial facility together with the other participants. As the medical staff starts the trial, they inject the vaccine and the virus into him. After a month, Uncle Priest is things to cope with boredom in the trial facility. At this time, the symptoms of the virus are slowly manifesting to his body. As he attempts to play the flute, an excessive amount of blood starts coming out from him, which makes him pass out. The medical staff then puts blood on Uncle Priest to prevent his loss of blood from the virus. But it appears to be not enough, as the virus continues to damage his body. The doctor tries to revive him, but he still dies in the end. The doctor declares his time of death. To the doctor's surprise, Uncle Priest miraculously resurrects and declares a prayer right after his resurrection. After six months, Uncle Priest comes out of the trial as the sole survivor of the virus. The news of his survival quickly spreads. He gains a lot of believers who wait for him outside, asking him to cure their illnesses. As he arrives in the church, the blind superior priest congratulates him for his survival. Later, he comes to a children's party for the cancer patients when an old woman approaches him. The old woman, nicknamed Mother, turns out to be his foster mother. She is asking for his help since her spoiled real son, called Son Shitty, is suffering from cancer. So he comes to the hospital to perform a prayer for Son Shitty. On the side, Son Shitty's wife, called Beauty, silently listens. Apparently, Uncle Priest and Beauty are both adopted by Mother during their childhood, while Beauty soon became Son Shitty's wife. Uncle Priest visits Mother's home, and he smells blood from Beauty, who turns out to be on her period. Some shitty arrives, bringing his friends from work, the dam manager with his Catholic wife, and a retired police chief. They then all together play Manjuan while catching up with each other. Apparently, Mother treats Beauty like a slave. At this moment, Beauty seems like a servant for Sun Shitty, who makes fun of her, making her fall to the ground. Uncle Priest then offers her help, as he feels sympathetic for her. After that, Uncle Priest comes home, where he notices that his senses are becoming more sensitive. He begins to see, hear, smell, and sense everything around him. As he cannot take the overwhelming sensation, he passes out to the ground. The following day, Uncle Priest wakes up from the burning sensation he gets from sunlight. Realizing that he needs to take cover from the sun, he spends the whole daytime hiding in the closet. At night, he receives a call from the nurse, asking him to perform a prayer for a bleeding patient. As he begins the prayer, his cravings for the patient's blood suddenly distract him, making him stutter. When he cannot resist it anymore, he secretly licks the blood on his hand. Unsatisfied, he sneaks to the other room and sips blood out of the comatose patient. After consuming a lot of blood, he notices that the symptoms of the virus disappear and he begins to look younger. Apparently, blood allows him to self-heal. But without satisfying his thirst for blood, the symptoms of the virus come back again. At this moment, he figures out that he turned into a vampire, having the ability to self-heal. He then jumps out of the window, but comes out alive out of the severe damage from the fall, confirming his newfound ability. Meanwhile, the frustrated beauty cannot sleep, so she begins running outside barefooted. She does this to express her hidden resentment towards her crappy life with Mother and some shitty. At the same time, it drains herself, making her completely numb from Mother's shitty treatment of her. She pretends to sleepwalk at night from Mother and Son Shitty as an excuse to freely run outside. Suddenly, she encounters Uncle Priest while running. Upon seeing that she is barefooted, Uncle Priest gives his shoe to her out of concern. As he comes near to her, his attention points towards her delicious blood. The following night, Uncle Priest comes to inform the superior priest that he turned into a vampire after the trial. 
To convince the superior priest, he let the blind superior priest touch his heart. Uncle Priest speculates that vampire blood is transfused to him during the trial. The vampire blood then forces him to thirst for all of the sinful pleasure just to get a taste of blood. To spare Uncle Priest from sin during that night, the superior priest lets Uncle Priest drink blood out of his body. The next night, Uncle Priest visits Mother's house to play Mahjong with them. Through his vampire intuition, he is able to win the game flawlessly. Beauty now appears attracted to his hormones and secretly takes a glance at him. After that, Beauty goes alone to close the store, and Uncle Priest eventually follows her. She then replaces his shoe. At this moment, they confirm their attraction to each other. As their hormones rage, Uncle Priest hesitates, thinking that is a sinful act. He even slaps his legs, possibly his hot dog, to prevent his hormone urge. Suddenly, Mother starts calling Beauty, which stops the moment. They then head back to the Mahjong table as if nothing happened. As their sinful desires are left unsatisfied, they begin seducing each other. Uncle Priest then hints that he will stay in the hospital on Sunday. So the following day, Beauty informs Mother that she will visit the hospital on Sunday to help the needy as an excuse. As Sunday comes, Beauty pays a hormone visit to Uncle Priest in the hospital. He hesitates to make love with her since he knows that it is a sin and they will end up in hell. But she insists as she comes there to experience heaven with him. At this moment, he cannot resist it anymore and starts doing hormone exercises with her by biting Beauty, making her react in pain while Beauty really enjoys it. Two minutes later after the game, Beauty abruptly leaves in disgust as Uncle Priest reveals that he is a vampire by sucking the blood out of the comatose patient. After that, Uncle Priest sneaks to the bathroom to meet Beauty, so he can explain himself. He tells Beauty that his vampire blood is like a disease. He then explains that he never intends to be accidentally infected by the vampire blood. He tries to escape out of the house with Beauty, but to his disappointment, Beauty refuses to leave with him. Several days later, Beauty suddenly gets curious about Uncle Priest's vampire blood, so she contacts him once again. They then meet on a rooftop, where Uncle Priest demonstrates his supernatural strength and skill to Beauty. As they enjoy the moment, Uncle Priest accidentally sees Beauty's womb, and he suspects that her shitty husband inflicted it on her. Beauty then affirms his suspicions and informs him that she spent her whole life living as her husband's servant. One night, Uncle Priest visits the superior priest in the monastery. The superior then offers him blood, but he politely refuses the offer. Shortly after, the superior priest reveals his desire to see light before he dies, after spending years being blind. The superior priest then asks for the vampire blood, which can cure his blindness. This makes Uncle Priest leave out of disgust, and declares that he is no longer a priest. Leaving the monastery, Uncle Priest heads to Mother's house to seek temporary shelter. There, Uncle Priest plays a secret hormone game with Beauty, while leaving Sun Shitty alone in his room. Sun Shitty then comes to find her, thinking that she is sleepwalking again. To prevent her from leaving the room during the night, Mother locks the door. At night, Beauty finds a way to escape the room, so she stabs herself to call Uncle Priest. As he comes to the room, he thinks that Sun Shitty hurts her again. This makes his attempt to murder Sun Shitty, but she stops him. Instead, the three of them go fishing to the isolated dam, right before sunrise. There, Sun Shitty figures out that Uncle Priest is about to murder him, so he tries to fight back, but no match to Uncle Priest's shitty muscles. Uncle Priest asks her before he murders Sun Shitty, and she affirms. He then proceeds to drown Sun Shitty to death. The following day, the authorities respond to the situation. The authorities conclude that Sun Shitty's death is an accident, sparing Uncle Priest and Beauty from the blame. Night comes, Uncle Priest heads to the monastery where his followers still await him. His followers start praying upon seeing that Uncle Priest is sick again, thinking he gets sick for the sake of their sins. Uncle Priest ignores them as he flies towards the superior priest. He then confesses his murderous act and asks the superior priest to perform the forgiveness prayer to him. The superior priest obliges in exchange for the vampire blood. In the midst of the prayer, he begins to bleed severely because of the virus. This makes him suddenly thirst for blood. Without a choice, he murders the superior priest to satisfy his thirst for blood. Meanwhile, Mother continues to grieve about her shitty son, as the authorities cannot find his body. Mother then drowns herself with alcohol to cope with sadness. Her extreme emotions make her pass out. They then immediately bring her to the hospital. Unfortunately, Mother ends up being completely paralyzed from extreme emotions and drinking alcohol. After Mother gets paralyzed, Uncle Priest and Beauty think that they can freely satisfy their hormone urge in the house. But their guilt starts to haunt them, as shitty visions of Sun Shitty keep appearing to them, and intervene in their snuggly moment together. On Mother's birthday, Uncle Priest and Beauty buy cake for her. 
During the celebration, Beauty suddenly slaps Mother in anger since Mother never held a birthday celebration for her. Uncle Priest then reminds her to respect Mother. He assures her that they will have a birthday party for her, although they do not know her exact birthday. Overwhelmed with emotion, she embraces him and accidentally utters that Son Shitty never hurts her. This revelation enraged Uncle Priest since he only murdered Son Shitty, thinking that he always hurt her. They then begin to argue with each other as they point fingers at who to blame for Son Shitty's death. Meanwhile, Mother hears their secret, but she appears to be helpless as she is completely paralyzed. Their guilt also haunts them as shitty visions of Son Shitty appear again. Beauty asks for Mother's forgiveness to cope with guilt, but Mother refuses to do so. In the end, Beauty tearfully asks Uncle Priest to end her life, declaring that she wants to reunite with her husband who truly loves her. Out of pain, Uncle Priest obliges by breaking her neck, which instantly ends her life. But he soon regrets his decision, and decides to revive Beauty by giving her vampire blood. He then cuts his wrist and puts his blood into Beauty's mouth. Shortly after, Beauty resurrects, and they sip each other's blood. After Beauty's resurrection, Uncle Priest declares that today is her birthday. On the other side, the paralyzed mother helplessly witnesses the horrifying scene. As a birthday gift for Beauty, Uncle Priest paints the house wall white. Meanwhile, Beauty takes care of Mother, feeding her and giving her necessities. As night comes, Beauty ambushes a police officer in the middle of the road. As the police officer walks out of the vehicle to check her, she starts beating him. She cuts his neck, letting the blood flow out of his body. She then happily takes a sip on the flowing blood, which greatly satisfies her thirst. After that, Beauty comes home, driving the police officer's car. Uncle Priest immediately notices that she murders someone to eat blood. He then angrily tells her that they don't need to murder anyone to satisfy their thirst, since they can get blood from a hospital and from those who want to commit suicide. But she still insists that the blood of the murdered people is much tastier. Uncle Priest then starts chasing her along with the neighborhood as they argue with each other. They keep flying around the buildings until Uncle Priest catches her. He then beats her up to teach her a lesson. Later, the manager, the Catholic wife, and the retired police chief arrive at their house to play mahjong. Mother uses the mahjong tiles and eye movements to inform them that Beauty and Uncle Priest murder Son Shitty. After some time, the three of them finally figure out Mother's message. They are in shock upon knowing the revelation. The retired police chief then tries to walk out of the house, but Beauty punches him and instantly breaks his neck, leading to his death. Meanwhile, the manager and a Catholic wife try to run for their lives along the white hallways. Uncle Priest prevents Beauty from murdering everyone, but she is already out of control. She then continues to choke the helpless manager. After that, they leave the Catholic wife tied up with Mother, while Beauty proceeds to sip the blood out of the dead bodies. Soon after, the Catholic wife escapes from being tied up and attempts to murder Beauty, but she is unaffected after consuming a lot of blood. In anger, Beauty walks down to get a saw to cut her body. But upon walking upstairs, she sees Uncle Priest already taking a sip of blood from her. After the bloodbath, Uncle Priest drives away from the crime together with Beauty and Mother. Meanwhile, the Catholic wife wakes up in the White House. Apparently, Uncle Priest pretends I'm killing her, so as to save her from beauty. Uncle Priest keeps driving until they reach an endless vast field in the middle of nowhere. Beauty wonders why they are there, but she soon realizes Uncle Priest's plan to end their lives when sunrise comes. Knowing that there is no shelter around, she tries to seek shelter in the car trunk. But Uncle Priest throws the cover to the ocean, Realizing that she has no choice but to accept her demise, she sits beside Uncle Priest in the car, waiting for sunrise. Soon after, the sun finally rises, which slowly burns them. In the end, Mother happily watches them slowly burn to death. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.